So a 10 column worksheet puts steps four, five, six, and seven on one page. And when I learned accounting a million years ago, I'd ride my dinosaur to school and we would do 10 column worksheets all day long. We've become more sophisticated since then, but we still talk about them once in a while because they are a good tool and a good way to learn uh, how steps four, five, six, and seven all work together. So let's do a real simple 10 column worksheet so you get a feel for what we're talking about. So it's called a 10 column worksheet because we've got two columns for the trial bounds, two for the adjusting entries we're going to make, two for the adjusted trial bounds, two for the income statement, and two for the balance sheet. That gives us a total of 10. And in the first two columns, you see our familiar trial bounds, which we create in step four of the accounting cycle. So let's pretend like there's only two adjusting journal entries for this company at the end of January. They've got rent expense of 1,000 and accounts receivable that are sent out at month end for money that they've earned but hadn't billed yet. So we see that they have some prepaid rent up here for 12,000. So the adjusting journal entry for the rent expense is debit rent expense for 1,000, credit prepaid rent for 1,000. The adjusting journal entry for the accounts receivable is debit accounts receivable for 500 and credit consulting fees earned for 500. So let's post those in the columns called adjustments, debits, and credits. So there's our $1,000 reduction in the asset prepaid rent. There's our $1,000 rent expense, expense to debits, expense to debits, expense to debits. There's our $500 of accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is an asset. It increases with debits. And here's the increase in our revenue account of $500. When we total up all the debits and all the credits, we get $1,500 in both columns. Well, that wasn't so hard. Now comes the part we have to be careful. We have to take this trial balance and adjust it by our adjustments. Well, what happened to cash in the adjusting process? Nothing, because adjusting journal entries never affect cash. But what happened to prepaid rent? It went from a $12,000 balance with a credit of $1,000 down to an $11,000 debit balance. What happened to supplies? Nothing. What happened to accounts receivable? Its debit balance of zero went to a debit balance of 500. Owner's capital didn't change. Consulting fees they earned went from $19,000 credit balance to a $19,500 credit balance. Salaries expense is still $1,000 debit. Telephone is still $1,000. And now we have rent expense, which had a zero balance. Now it's going to have a $1,000 debit balance. So when we very carefully adjust our trial balance numbers by the adjustments in the two columns for the adjusting journal entries, we end up with an adjusted trial balance. And just as in the trial balance and just as in the adjusting column, now the adjusted trial balance should have equal debits and credits. So in this example, we were smart enough to have all our revenue and all our expenses down here in the lower half. So to create the income statement in a columns seven and eight, we just have to move over the income statement numbers. Now, back in the old days, when I did these things, we didn't have Excel. So we had big pieces of paper and sometimes we'd have to add balance sheet accounts down here at the bottom. And you may see that in some of the homework. That's really not very fair because nowadays, if we need to add a row into the uh, balance sheet account, we just add a row in Excel. All right. So are these two columns going to equal each other? No. Unless we exactly broke even, our revenue is going to be more than our expenses or our revenue is going to be less than our expenses. So sure enough, we have $19,500 worth of revenue and $3,000 worth of expenses. So what's our net income? $19,500 minus $3,000 is $16,500. So when we add $16,500 to the left-hand side, we end up with debits and credits that are exactly equal. And columns 9 and 10 are for the balance sheet, so all we have to do is pull these numbers over, and they aren't going to balance either. They're going to be off by 16500 So we have to add the net income of 16500 to the right-hand side of the balance sheet. Remember, owner's capital at the beginning plus net income minus owner's drawings gives us owner's capital at the end. So let's add 16500 to the right-hand side. And sure enough, all our debits equal all our credits. And that's all there is to the 10 column worksheet. And that's really easy for me to say, but what's gonna happen is when you have to do one of these things by hand, 
you're going to accidentally screw up and when you make the adjustments you're going to have thirteen thousand dollars worth of prepaid rent because you took the debit of twelve thousand and added a thousand instead of subtracting a thousand or you're going to transpose the number when you pull it across so these things are very challenging to do in that this in the sense that there's a lot of details but they're a good learning experience and when you get out here to columns seven eight nine and ten seven and eight won't balance they'll be off by net income and nine and ten won't balance they'll be off by net income all right hope that helps